Welcome back to Country Cow Designs, I'm Jo and in this short video tutorial I'm going to show you how to make an iPad sleeve. This is a free tutorial, you can download the pattern for free from our website countrycowdesigns.com. So you're going to need a raw edge fabric for this, now I've got cork here, leather here, you could use vinyl or faux leather, there's a few different options for what you could use but it's going to need to be a raw edge fabric. Now you can see on this one we've got a strap closure front so I'm just going to show you this fits um, all of the standard iPads from the first generation to the ninth generation should fit in here. This is quite an old one don't know which one it is um, but there, there's a little bit of movement so you can fit all of them in there. Now the other option for closing it is a magnetic snap so um, we've, we're going to go through the strap closure in the tutorial but if you want to add a magnetic snap you can do that just make sure it's one that's got a rivet back because it's going to be on show or like this one you could cover it with a piece of leather instead so there's a rivet back one for an example the pattern also has a little rear pocket on the back for you to slip things into but of course you could leave it completely clear like it is on this one this one in fact is super simple it doesn't even have a closure it just it's quite a thick heavy leather so we didn't have anything on that so you can make this pattern as simple or complicated as you like. We're going to go through the piping option in this pattern. Piping just adds a really nice little classy touch. This one's got big yellow piping to stand out. This one has a little bit more subtle small green piping. We're just using shop-bought pre-made piping here which you can get from eBay or your local sewing shop. Lots of different places it's just pre-made and you can get it in different thicknesses. And then this one has something totally different, exterior binding. So this takes a little bit of practice to get it just right, but if you want to give it a go, that's a great option too. We're not going to cover that in this video though. There's loads and loads of ways you could customize this and personalize it. We're going to let you, you know, choose those different options yourself. We're going to run through a few things in the video, but let us know in the comments how you've personalized yours and what you've done with yours. We would love to hear from you. We've also got the option for the lining fabric, which we're going to go through in this pattern tutorial too. So if you've got any questions, just let us know in the comments and I really hope you enjoy this tutorial. Thanks for watching. The first thing you need to do is print your pattern pieces on paper and stick them together. We've got a short video on how to do this, so I'll link that now. Now, you're going to have a grey area, two identical grey areas here, which you need to cut out and then keep one of these aside. You're cutting both of these out on your paper pattern pieces, but not your fabric. That's very important. Now, before you start, make sure you check your test square, because if this is the wrong size, then your whole pattern is going to be slightly smaller or bigger and it's not going to fit your iPad. So just pay attention to that. Now, you're going to use this to cut out your fabric. So I've got mine here ready to go. Now you can see that I've cut this opening up here out, but we're not cutting out this one. It does say so on the pattern piece. You're not cutting that one out. This one is simply for placement. So to make sure this doesn't move around, I'm just going to put a couple clips and make sure that it's in the right place. Now what you should have done is use this to cut out one piece from your fabric. So I've cut it from my cork. This is optional. I mean, you don't have to have the pocket if you don't want it. But what I've done is I've already cut that out and this is going to be my guide for placing the pocket. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is put some double sided tape on the bottom edge. Now you're going to need nice, thin double sided tape and you're going to want it right on the very edge. And this needs to be tape that you can sew through, although a lot of the time I find that the difference is made by my needle. So if you're using a universal needle, you'll get some stickiness on your needle. If you use a Microtex or a super universal, then you won't have that problem. So we're putting the tape on the bottom shorter edge, and then you're gonna use this cutout as a guide. There we go, to place your pocket. Now I'll take this over to the sewing machine and I'm going to start up here, back stitching, and I'm going to work my way down the sides across the bottom edge 
and up the side. We're not sewing this long edge at the top. So there's our pocket attached. Now, if you're using magnetic fasteners, there are little marks on the pattern pieces for where to mark your fabric. So just mark your fabric first of all, and you're just gonna fit this one to start with. Don't fit the flat fastener yet. Now, if you are using fasteners, as the pattern instructs, they need to be rivet back fasteners because they're gonna be on show on both sides. So you can't use ones with prongs that are gonna be on show. Now for this video, we're going to be fitting the strap instead. So you should have your strap piece cut out. If you've got a really thick material, maybe a nice thick leather, then you just want this to be one inch high by 11 inches wide. Because I'm using cork, mine is two inches high by 11 inches wide because we're going to make it into two layers. So flip it over. And if you're using cork or something like that, like I am, draw a line down the center and then apply some double-sided tape or you can use fabric glue if you prefer down these long edges and we're going to fold these long edges into the center line and now i'm going to top stitch both long edges with a quarter inch seam allowance So that's what your strap should look like. Bear in mind that on this pattern, there's gonna be a lot of raw edges. Now, if it's your first time using cork, one helpful thing can be um, to sort of neaten the edges with a bit of flame. Now, this is very, very quick. You've gotta be careful that you're not gonna damage your fabric. But sometimes what ha will happen with cork is that it will kind of like fluff on the edges. So one technique to stop this from happening is just to like really quickly use a lighter on it but you need to be extremely quick extremely careful so i would recommend practicing on and off cup first okay so that is your strap all done so just set that aside for later if you haven't already cut out your lining all you need to do is fold the pattern piece on the fold line and then you just cut out a piece of fabric that's the exact same size now you can see mine's not interfaced if you want to interface it feel free to um, as this is fitted, it's going to have a little bit of glue around these edges and we can zigzag stitch this edge so that it won't fray. But another way to stop any fraying is to interface it with a woven or a non-woven cotton interfacing. To ensure a nice neat fit with the lining, we're then going to trim one eighth of an inch off every side. So that's all of these edges to make it an eighth of an inch smaller on each edge. So there's my eighth of an inch trimmed off each side and I'm just gonna set that aside for later. Now, if you want to have the optional piping, you'll need to cut a length that's 36 inches long. This piping can be as big or as small as you like. Um, I've just got ready-made piping. It's got a pretty small cord in it, but I just wanted a nice subtle touch on this one. So to fit that, we're gonna grab the main panel and we're gonna use the paper pattern piece to mark the fold line. To make it nice and easy to fit the piping, I'm going to use double-sided tape. Now you could use a fabric glue if you prefer. There's no problem with that. Uh, this is just my preferred method. But again, if you're using just a plain old universal needle, then you will probably have an issue. Even with double-sided sewing tape, it will gum up your needle. Next, I'm going to mark my piping one inch in from each end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my piping on the half way mark. So this is the fold line mark that we made. And I want the one inch to be in line with this edge.
and then I'm going to fold it back at an angle like that. And I'm going to make sure that it's just hanging off the edge. So this is actually easier if you do it from this direction. And what I'm going to do is fit it all the way around, making sure that the stitching on the piping is completely hidden. Like that. So I'm going to do that around the whole of this edge, all the way back around to the other side. Now, as you get to these corners, you need to make sure that the curve sort of, the piping follows this um, sort of curved corner thing. So this is where the double sided tape will really hold, help hold it all in place. You can use fabric glue, but you kind of need to do it a little bit at a time because otherwise your glue will dry before you get there. So on these top corners, because they're sharp corners, you need to fold it out like that so that you've got a nice neat corner on your piping. And then you can either leave that as a nice neat fold or you can just trim that bit out. Okay, if you just wanna remove a little bit of bulk there. Now, what should happen is that when you get back down here, your second one inch mark should be near this one. Now we're going to fold it the same way as we did on the other bit. So just make sure that your piping cord is facing the same direction on both sides. And you can, again, stick that in place if you want to hold it down, or you could just put a clip on there. So just check your piping is completely neat. Now, of course, the piping is an optional step. If you don't want the piping, that is absolutely fine. But when you're using raw edge fabrics like this, it does mean that you don't have two raw edges touching, which just gives a slightly neater finish. Once your lining is attached, you need to use some more double-sided tape. So again, if you want to use fabric glue, that is absolutely fine. Okay, and we're going to bring this up so that they are together. Now, I like to match up my corners first. Now, this is where it's important that your lining is hidden, but your piping is showing. And you can just use some clips to hold that in place. Now, if you've got a few little stray pieces of fabric, just tuck those in. And just clip that in place all the way around, again, making sure that the stitching on your piping is hidden. When you get down to your piping, you can just check that it's kind of going right into that bottom curve. You can move it around a little bit. We've only stuck it in place, so you should be able to move it around right now if you need to. So double check everything, make sure that it's looking really neat on both sides, that your piping is even, that your stitches aren't showing, like mine are just there. Check that you're happy with everything. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew, starting here and back, back stitching, we're gonna sew up and all the way around with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And then we're gonna sew again with three eighths of an inch seam allowance. But before you do that, if you are having a strap fastener, we need to attach the strap now. So you're gonna want your strap to be four inches up. Make sure that your raw edge is on the inside. And you wanna line this up with the edge, not the piping, but the edge of the iPad case. If you're having the magnetic snap fastener, you just you don't need to worry about that quite yet. 
So I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and sew all the way up and around with an eighth of an inch seam allowance and then with a three eighths of an inch. The three eighths of an inch means that we catch this um, slightly closer to this inner edge and it also means that the strap is sewn in twice for a bit of extra strength. On my machine, I can move my needle over, so I prefer to use this method for my 3 8 of an inch seam allowance because I can still keep my presser foot up against the edge of the cork and it just makes it simpler for me. <laughs> Okay, so there it is. Now, if you're using magnetic snap fasteners, now's the time to fit the one up here. And that will go all the way through, which is why it needs to be a rivet back magnetic snap. So you can just check that your tablet fits in there. And then you just wanna give this top edge a bit of a press. So what you can do without the tablet in it is um, leave it with a couple of books on and that will help set that edge. Or you can just use your fingers. But I think that looks pretty neat. I mean, I'm really happy with this cork. This cork is a bit grippy and a bit stretchy and my Teflon foot really wasn't making any difference. So I just stuck with my standard one. Um, it does make it a little bit harder, but you can see it's still a pretty quick, pretty easy pattern. I'm really, really happy with how that turned out. I think that just looks so cool in this rainbow fleck cork. This cork isn't the nicest experience to sew on my machine. Um, I think if you had a walking foot, it just you wouldn't even know about it, but it's got a little bit of stretch, but it's so worth it because look how awesome it looks. And I think the white piping really adds to it. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I'm just gonna show you what it looks like with an iPad in it. Um, we have got another pattern coming out very soon, not a free one, but a new backpack pattern. So I just wanted to show you that quickly, a little bit for sneak peek. So this is a backpack designed by Adam. Um, it's actually really good for guys and girls. It's really big on the inside. So you've got like an adjustable strap up here so that you can kind of open it up wider, um, but it opens up really wide. You can fit a lot in there. So this has kind of been our summer bag for using down the beach and things like that. So we just wanted to give you a quick sneak peek of that. That will be coming out on our YouTube channel at the end of July. So keep an eye out for that. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon.